And I remember a man I met years later who drove ambulances on the Western Front. And I remember a woman upon whose wall in the nursing home was a musket fired at the Battle of Lexington and Concord. You see, my life is not just my life. It's all the lives I have met. It is all their memories which they gave to me. It's all the objects with which they impregnated me, their DNA, their spiritual DNA is in me. And by sharing them now, you have them too. The key to personal unity of soul is not yourself, but giving it to other selves. Do you understand what I'm saying? You as older people, and we have a few in this congregation, the best way to hold to make your soul whole is to give your memories to others, to sit down and tell stories, not just about yourself, but please include yourself, of times that the other person didn't have, to give them of your spiritual DNA, to tell them the stories of the world they did not know, of a world they will not know directly, but you can give them because you're telling of yourself. If you wish to be whole, my old friends, give of yourself to others, from yourself. Look to others. Give them your life and you will be whole. That's because, that's because the world, the whole world lives inside each of us. I'm going to posit something that you might find bizarre, which is just as like there's DNA in each of your cells that makes you up and each of the cells are different, I think there is one soul in the whole universe. That's it. Emerson called it the oversoul. Whatever it is, it matters not. Brahma, I don't care what the name is. There's one soul and we are each a piece of it. But just like a cell, it contains all the DNA of the same spirit that exists out there. In other words, each and every one of you may be just a cell, but you contain all the raw data of reality inside of you. Think about that. You're not God, but you have all that God is inside you. And yet you live your own distinct life. And you express that through your own patterns of life. The world lives in each of us. And for us to become whole inwardly, we have to give it back outwardly. Do you hear what I'm trying to say? That your spiritual destiny is not to live forever, but to give life forever. To remember ourselves, we have to remember the world, to be resurrected with it, because every time I mention Herbert W. Rice, who fell out of an airplane in Pensacola, Florida, now you know he exists, and he is momentarily resurrected. Every time Marilyn plays Puccini on the piano, Puccini lives for a moment. Do you understand the telling of stories, the giving of music, the looking at art resurrects the person behind it and the persons behind it. We sit in this building and we try to imagine the thousands of people who have sat here. It doesn't matter for a moment they're alive. We practice resurrection every day that we think and share the stories of the people we know and we imagine the stories of the people we don't know. The fruit of the Spirit is that we seek to remember not only ourselves, but the world itself, and that we become immortal, not by hanging on to who we are, but by giving everything that we are, that it may be resurrected in the future. Not through some magic of the grave opening and us standing up, but through the magic of people's hearts and minds that can conjure us up out of nothing, just by hearing our names. I want to tell you that the ambulance driver, the man who drove at the Western Front, was a man named Charles Hartshorn. He was a great philosopher, and I knew him as a member of my church in Texas. He was 95 when I met him. He lived to be 102. He was born in 1897 and lived to the year 2000, completely through the 20th century. And his notion of God was, and it's a very good notion, by the way. I believe he's right is that God is the mind of the universe and everything that happens in it contributes to the mind of God. Everything. Did you hear me say the word everything? I like that because it means it doesn't matter whether I live 60, 70, 90, or 100 years or whether I ever exist in this form or not. The universe remembers me completely. And it remembers Wally and Jim and Joseph 
and Bonnie and Betsy and Dick and Tim and Bill. It will remember Fred, Mary, Joe. It will remember everyone, even the names I don't know. The universe, God will remember all of you, all of you completely, every moment of your lives and how they interpenetrate with every other moment of every other lives into what William James called maximum subjective richness. And it happens in the universe. It's going to happen anyway. But the great thing is we can enjoy it now by giving of ourselves while we live. This is what God is about, remembering us to life. Zikron l'chaya. Remember I told you that phrase would come back? Remember us into life, O Lord. God exists to remember everything and in every moment remembers with perfection everything that was such that we never cease to exist in the universe, though we may cease to know the universe personally. Your lives will not go on forever, but your life will matter forever. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope you do. Because this is what God is about. God is the vivid air. God is the sun that falls down. God is the medium through which everything happens. It makes the chemicals, the air, It makes all things and then holds them preciously, completely, entirely, and perfectly forever and ever. At the end of this series, I want you to know my elder friends, my aged ones, my geezers, my old people, you who are at death's door waiting for God in the ante room, your lives are not done. They have reached fullness. They have reached completion. Remember, remember, remember. Put the universe together with your hearts and your minds. Practice God's blessing of remembering so that we who live here in doubt will know that you are giving to us the world you were and the world you knew so that we can get a glimpse of God's remembering us into life. Remember us into life. For we may go again to be the dust we tread. But whenever we breathe upon the dust, they rise and are. What more could one want from life than to be remembered, to be part of a universe that never forgets? May these words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be found true in thy sight, thou who art my rock and my redeemer.